Hello viewers and welcome to a new STM32 World Tutorial video. Today we are going to talk about the CRC peripheral which is uh, included in pretty much all uh, STM32 um, MCUs. If we look at the one I'm using, uh, the STM32 F45, we'll see under the features uh, we will see an CRC calculation unit included and that is mentioned several times through uh, the data sheet um, and I'm not going to go too much into the calculations of CRC in this uh, video if you need it you'll probably know what it is but there's a Wikipedia article that goes through the details of the calculation and the idea is that you can calculate the CRC on any data uh, and if there's even one bit that differs the CRC value will be uh, wildly different so it is typically used for communication for example I square C or I to C um, there is a CRC calculation included in that so every time you send a message it will also transmit a CRC and that is the way you can verify that or the CRC I to C peripheral will verify that the data received is actually the same as the data transmitted. It is also typically used to um, verify data storage when you create a file uh, you will create a CRC as well and then you can use that CRC value to to verify that the file is uh, actually what you road. In order to test this I'm going to go back to an old project. Uh, I got it running at the moment. It was the SD FATFS uh, SDIO uh, and uh, if we look at the functionality of this uh, program you will see that when it starts up it actually writes a one megabyte file uh, down to with some random data in it and then every 10 seconds it will read that file uh, and at the moment it just reads the file there. Um, <coughs> it does nothing with the data at the moment but I thought what we could do is we could add to this particular project we will add, um, we'll add CSC check uh, on that file. Um, on that uh, file, the, the big file. Um, in the code um, it happens down in the main loop. Uh, where is it here? We'll see that we are cycling through uh, a buffer of a one kilobyte buffer 1024 times, so one megabyte we end up uh, writing down and uh, down in the main loop uh, we will open that file and read it whatever no matter what size it is uh, so let's um, actually add CRC to this uh, so in this one I have not prepared anything so I will start from scratch by cloning this project the one I was using so I'll start by copying the project and then paste the project and we will call it Rather than that, we will call it CRC. So we'll call it the same with CRC at the end. And you will see that it created, where was it? Here. It created that project. Uh, we need to, um, this is mentioned in another video, we need to rename the IOC file here, CRC and we need to nuke the debug folder completely. Let's start by verifying that this actually works. So let's uh, open the IOC file, generate the code again. First time it always takes a little bit of time. This is a new project. But it will get there uh, and we will just use it exactly as it is, generate the code. Yeah. 
here we got the code. Uh, I usually format it because I don't like those spaces. We uh, probably, we might, I don't know if it clones the properties. Let's go into the settings, optimization. It does clone the properties, but it, I don't think it clones the run information. Let's try to build the project. And let's try to run the project. Uh, okay, it doesn't clone the run information, but we are pretty much using the default settings. So let's just fire that up and see what happens on the output. There we go. It wrote the file in 0 0.7 seconds roughly, and now it's running 10 seconds, and then it'll read the file again, and uh, there we go. So, without any further ado, on this project, let's try to enable the CRC calculation peripheral. <coughs> In STM32 CubeMX, it is hidden down under computing. You have CRC, and we can simply activate it. And there are no other settings that needs to be done. So let's generate this code with the CRC uh, unit enabled, CRC peripheral enabled. So we go back here and let's look at what it created. It created down here the MX uh, CRC in it. And uh, now a way to uh, find out how to use this in help will be to, um, to read the reference manual, the help reference manual. But I find that if I want to find out a new aspect of help, the easiest is usually to look at the source code because one thing you can say about this hell library is that the documentation, the code is very, very well documented inside the code. So let's look at, I would usually go down to the initialization code that STM32 CubeMX generated and then simply look at the code by opening the declaration of this one. And here we can see that it is a relatively short uh, library that basically have an init, a d init, hardware init and d init, and then a calculate and an accumulate. The calculate is used for the first uh, calculation. And you'll see an interesting thing here is that it calls a macro called hell CSC DR reset. And that one will reset the counter inside. And then you can use help accumulate to Further, if you have more than 32 bit that you want to do, you can basically uh, run several times. You can use the accumulate and the result will be correct. So the method in our case will be to make sure we reset uh, the CRC unit when we write the data and then call the health CRC accumulate for every time we loop through those buffers when we are writing the data. So let's start by going in here and change the code a little bit. What I want to do is up here under the variables, I want to create a couple of new variables, a 32-bit uh, CRC written, and we will do a CRC read. Those two variables we will calculate down in the code and then compare them to see if everything was okay. So we find the place in our main code where we are writing that big file. That is here, we are first creating the buffer and then we cycle through this. So if we go in again and look at this code, we need to call this uh, hell CRC reset Uh, and we need to do this before we start writing the buffer data down. So around here, uh, what is the variable called for the peripheral uh, was called uh, HCSE, help CSE presumably. Uh, so down here, we can simply pass it a pointer to the HCSE 
variable. So this should reset our CRC unit so that it starts to calculate new one. And then down in the loop here, where we before we are writing the data, we simply calculate that buffer. So we will see so, uh, CRC written equals L CRC accumulate eight CRC and address buff and buffer length. Uh, well, remember this is uh, the hell CRC accumulate. Uh, expect a 32-bit uh, array and we are having an 8-bit uh, array up here so essentially it will be size of buff divided by uh, 4. Right. That will be the length of the buffer variable uh, and that is pretty much all there is to calculate the CRC before. Let's see if it builds yeah, right. I waited. I missed a semicolon there. Well, let's try to build it again. Build project. And there is a warning from an incompatible, so we should probably typecast this to that. I think that will compile without a warning. Pretty much. So, later, down in the main loop, we are going to read that big file uh, here. And so what we need to do is we need to reset that CRC again. And then we can copy, where is it? We can copy this line. So we will read where are we again? We are here. We will read the buffer in uh, size of. We will read those uh, same same buffer, uh, and then we just summarize the buffer down here so we can put this in. And in this case, we keep track of the red, and the rest of it is exactly the same down here where we print out how long that red took we can add the printf um, written crc equals uh, percent zero eight x i guess new line uh written crc and then we copy that line one more time and we say red CSE align it nicely. And in this case, we print red CSE. Now, if the theory is correct, the data read back should have exactly the same CSE value as the data written down in that file at an earlier time. And since we reset the H CSE, uh, the the CSE peripheral between each time, we will calculate. We will start the calculation afresh with the health CSE accumulate. Let's see if this builds. It did not. What did I call it? I call it CSC written. Okay, yeah, well, I haven't got a very good memory. CRC written. And uh, CRC read. I'm sure everybody was screaming that I made that mistake. Uh, but fortunately, I can't hear you while I'm doing this. So that is pretty much all there is to us. Let's try to run this. and see what happens. So we wrote it down as before. While we did that, we will calculate the CSE written, and then we read. And here we have it. The red took 
uh, 0.34 uh, seconds and the written CRC from earlier we have here and the written the red CRC turned out to be exactly the same so that is essentially um, that is essentially the way the CRC peripheral works uh, it is extremely quick uh, and I actually do think it supports DMA as well uh, uh, let me see you can actually uh, maybe not uh, I don't know but it, it is extreme extremely quick uh, so it is much much faster than to calculate these CSE values uh, manually uh, so just wing it out to the uh, CSE um, peripheral and you can make these calculations really really quick so that is pretty much all uh, I can do with this uh, I managed to clone a project I managed to at a CRC check, uh, and I hope you got an understanding of how the peripheral works. I am fully aware that I didn't talk about CRC and how the calculations are actually done, uh, but I mean, you can go in and, and read the article on, um, on Wikipedia uh, that will have uh, quite a lot of information about CRC. Uh, it is used extensively in communication and data storage uh, checks uh, so it is a good thing to know a little bit about uh, and and know how to use it if it is needed uh, it is worth noticing uh, that uh, if we go into cubemx uh, i think if for example we enable i to c1 not going to use it but I'm fairly sure that there is a parameter session uh, no there's not in there maybe it is SPI let me see CSE calculation disabled enabled so it is possible for the uh, SPI peripheral so to use uh, S, uh, CSE calculations, the reason why it's not an option in I2C is that it is always part of I2C. Uh, same with CAN. I think in CAN communication, there's always a CSE value added to every single message to make sure that the message is not uh, scrambled that you actually read what was sent from the other end uh, and that is important anyway that's pretty much all uh, as usual i pretty much i i really really appreciate if you like and subscribe uh, if you don't like i you well i mean you can always give me a downvote but i really appreciate you will tell me in the comment down below why you didn't like it because that gives me a chance to actually improve these videos as always please have a wonderful rest of the day